This is the third section of the Volumes of Revolution chapter, and this is uh, Volumes of Revolution of Parametrically Defined Curves. Now, you'll remember from Pure 2, you've done uh, parametric equations, and parametric equations are those where um, your x and y are defined as functions of t. So x is a function of t, and y is a different function of t, or it may be a different function of t. Um, and we would have learned how to integrate those. And uh, when you do do integration with them, you'll remember that the, the limits of integration need to be changed to uh, t limits. So limits of integration, integration, uh, need to be in terms of t. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, what you wouldn't have done in, in Pure 2 is uh, know how to do a volume of um, volume of revolution. So, volume of a revolution for a parametric um, curve so let's call our limits t2 and t1 there's our limits in terms of t if we're uh, rotating uh, 2 pi around the x-axis so a volume of revolution um, is it like that around the x-axis no it's going to look like this yeah so here's our x-axis and it's being rotated 360 degrees that way then what we do we take the y part of our parametric that gets squared okay so that's going to be um, this the y part squared and then that gets multiplied by dx dt so this is uh, using my uh, functions that I've sort of created at the top that will be um, differentiating the uh, x part of the parametric equation so this will basically be like f uh, dash of t dt so everything gets integrated with respect to t so that's if it's being rotated around the x-axis if it's a volume of revolution around the y-axis so that's going to be there's a y-axis like that, so it's going to be rotated 2 pi around that way. Then again, our limits are going to be in terms of t. This time, it's going to be our function of x that gets uh, squared, so that would be f of t all squared. Then dy dt, so that's our y function differentiated dt so remember any of our uh, methods for uh, integrating this function of t uh, once it's all been multiplied any of our methods we could be asked to use so uh, partial fractions integration by parts any of those could come up okay the curve c has parametric equations uh, here for x and this for y, uh, for t greater than or equal to 0. We have the limits of 0 and 2. So my, uh, my x values are 0 and x equals 2. I'm going to have to change those to t values because it's a parametric equation. Find the exact volume of the solid form when r is rotated 2 pi around the x-axis. Okay, now because it says the exact value it means that you know I'm not um, writing any decimals it may be thirds it may be logs that I have my answer things in terms of e uh, things like that so the first thing we're going to do is write down our formula so the volume is pi and then I'll write down my limits of t2 and t1 so just to remind myself these need to be t limits and it's going to be y squared 
dx dt dt. So let's start with our limits. So when the x limit is zero, we want to find out what that is as a value of t. So that gets uh, plugged into the um, x part of the parametric equation. So that will be zero equals t times by one plus t. Okay, so uh, what does this mean? If we solve that equation, it means either t is zero, and then from the bracket, t is negative one. But we're told in the question that t is greater than zero. So that means we reject this and we have um, our lower limit t1 what I've called t1 is 0 okay let's look for the upper limit so x equals 2 so when x equals 2 that gets plugged into the um, x part of the parametric equation right this is going to need factorizing out and the 2 bringing over so I've got t squared plus t, bring the 2 over, minus 2 equals 0. All right, hopefully this should factorise without having to use a quadratic equation. That wouldn't be particularly nice. Um, so that's going to be plus 2 and minus 1. So from this, we're going to get values of t equals negative 2, t equals 1, we reject the minus 2 for the same reason because t needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So this gives my upper limit what I've called t2 equal to 1. Now we'll also need our dx dt. Okay, so that means differentiating so let's write it as x equals t plus t squared so that means that dx dt will be 2t plus 1 right we're now ready to substitute everything in so pi limits of 0 and 1 y squared, so that's the y part of the um, parametric equation squared, so I'll write it like that. And then that needs to be times by dx dt, which is 2t plus 1 dt. Now for this, in the book, they use uh, partial fractions. I'm going to show you a slightly different method. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to integrate this using substitution. You'll see we'll still get the same answer. So using substitution. So using substitution, I'm going to make the substitution u equals 1 plus t which means I need du dt that will be 1 I um, also want to find out what 2t plus 1 is so I'm also going to have from here 2u equals 2 plus 2t so that means that 2t plus 1 is equal to um, 2u minus 1, 2u minus 1. Right, so I'm just going to highlight the things I'm going to use for substitution. Right, so there's my um, 2t plus 1. Here's my substitution there. Um, I'll use the u equals 1 plus t. Okay, that will get substituted there. Um, and then my dt. Okay, I'll use that to substitute dt basically from that we'll have that um, du equals dt so I suppose I should highlight that really that's what we're going to be using for the substitution 
and then the limits we need to change the limits because these are um, T limits when change them to U limits so when T is 1 using my using this I will get uh, U equal to 2 and when T is 0 that lower limit I will get U equal to 1 so I'll just highlight that here that will be my substitution so let's make all of these substitutions now so let's just create a bit of space so we don't mix things up to left pi my limits of 0 and 1 become 1 and 2 1 over 1 plus t all squared becomes 1 over u squared times by um, 2u minus 1 that's the 2t plus 1 and my dt just becomes du okay so from here let's tidy this up a bit so that becomes 2u minus 1 over u squared um, that can be split up let's do it over here so I end up with 2u over u squared minus 1 over u squared now the first fraction here that will simplify just to 2 over u and then I've got uh, 1 over u squared so when I integrate this let's get the black pen so when I integrate this um, 2 over u well I will try log u log u um, and then I need to times it by 2 so the 2 over u becomes 2 log u and then the minus 1 over u squared remember that's the same as negative u to the minus 2 so we add 1 to the power divide by the new power so we'll end up with plus uh, 1 over u or u to the minus 1 with our limits of 1 and 2 right so hopefully we are almost done here so we'll have um, putting a limit of 2 in we'll have 2 log 2 2 log 2 um, plus 1 over 2 so half okay need to finish off down here minus um, 2 log uh, 1 which is other limit um, plus 1 so I'm going to move all the way up here yeah to finish it off simply because of lack of space so um, 2 log 1 is 0 because log 1 is 0 so that's just 0 so we end up with pi then 2 log 2 plus a half minus so the second bracket is basically 0 plus 1 so we finish up with pi and then 2 log 2 and then the half minus 1 is minus a half so there's our uh, final solution here and as I said in the book they do it by partial uh, fractions but it works equally as well using uh, substitution get the same answer so you should now be able to do exercise 4c on pages 84 to 87 so just remember when we're doing our volume of uh, revolution using our um, parametric equations if it's a revolution around the x-axis like this then I'll just put my limits here 
in terms of t. So y squared dx dt dt. And if it's a rotation around the y-axis, again, my t limits. And it'll be x squared dy dt dt. So it's one of those strange things where when you're part of uh, integrating is differentiating because you need to uh, differentiate to find this part, don't you? Yeah, and our parametric equation will be given as x, which is a function of t, and y, which is a function of t. And you'll need to square one and differentiate the other um, to integrate these parametrically.